posting our pictures. So uh, we're going to try to be as kind as we can to uh, make sure she gets all the information we're sharing. Um, Katie, would you call the roll? Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, Marta Larson. Present. Uh, contacting from Northfield Township, Michigan. Marie Grass. Present. Calling from Milan, Michigan. Bonnie Weber. You're on mute, Bonnie. Bonnie Weber calling in from Duran, Michigan. Thank you. I'd like to say that someone has media on in the background. If you could please turn that media off or mute yourself. Elizabeth Thompson. Present calling in from Ypsilanti Township. Lois Wilson. Stephen Stein. Um, yep, here from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Bennett Stark. Uh, present, uh, calling in from District 9, uh, Ann Arbor. Margaret R Reynolds. Present, calling in from Pittsfield Township. And Jason Machieski. Uh, present, calling from Dexter Township, Washtenaw County, Michigan. So we have a quorum? Yes. Okay, the next thing on the agenda is public participation. Um, we have a number of members of the public here. If any of them wishes to make a statement, please uh, use that raise your hand function and I will call on you one by one. I see no hands raised from members of the public who wish to speak. So we will move on. Um, that means we don't need to have commission response to public participation. Um, so we will go on to report from the Board of Commissioners, Jason. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, probably the, the biggest thing to note at this point is that the County Commission is working on the American Rescue Plan Act Part 3 or, or ARPA 3 as we're calling it <clears throat> bucket, which I'm glad to report has a component for uh, the uh, Senior Services Fund that uh, the Commission on Aging has put forward. So uh, I think that work will continue on the package in total uh, over probably the next, it, it might go into August at this point. Um, I'm not sure that it's going to make the July agenda, but this will probably be the biggest bucket of all the ARPA money that we do. Uh, it looks like it could be upwards of $30 million, which is uh, if the original bucket was 71 million, the original ARPA allocation. So this is uh, yeah, a big, big piece of it. Uh, includes a, a variety of things that are being discussed at this point, but uh, uh, it does include the, uh, the senior services uh, fund components. So, um, Thanks and congratulations to all of you who have gotten it this far. Uh, and uh, hopefully we'll be bringing that forward this summer um, for um, uh, deployment in the community. So uh, there are you know, some, with many of the components of the ARPA-3, uh, there's a lot of details and administrative things to be worked out about how certain things would happen and, um, you know, who would be involved in expending which, which you know, allocations. But uh, I think we're talking about, uh, and Marta, maybe you could remind me the, the amount that was recommended by the Commission, by the commission on Aging. Um, I want to say it was seven or eight. Eight. Eight million. Mm -hmm. um, I would not expect the, the number to be that number. Um, but it should be a substantial number. It's, I don't believe it's gonna be a small amount. Um, so 
Um, with that, uh, that, that, that's probably the biggest thing that, that is taking our kind of immediate attention. Um, at the commission level, we are on our uh, summer meeting schedule, which means we only have one voting meeting a month. Uh, the next voting meeting is July 6th. Uh, and at that meeting, uh, maybe the other, the other thing that I'm paying attention to is a, the question of the senior millage. And I know there was a meeting of the Say Yes group yesterday, which unfortunately I was unable to attend due to my work uh, commitments, but um, you know, still working to uh, have a discussion with county commission leadership about placing that item on the agenda on July 6th. Uh, there is another um, uh, county commission leadership meeting coming up, I believe on the 27th of this month. Uh, and that, that would be an important date to um, see where we are at. There is, I will, I will report back to this, this body that, um, you know, this is, this is uh, a question that's being thought about very seriously by members of the county commission. Um, and there are a lot of hills to climb with members. Um, uh, around timing of this, is this the right time to do this kind of question? Um, you know, other commissioners have other priorities as well. Uh, so, and there, there are just general issues of taxation in general about what the county might do strategically uh, over a course of time, I think that have been thrown into the mix too. So um, a lot of discussion yet to be had on that item, um, but if we're gonna get it on the ballot this year, it would have to be voted on at least the first reading at the July, Sixth meeting, uh, and then uh, at the uh, our meeting in August, which is August third, uh, would have to be the second vote because after that you can't get anything on the ballot. So um, those are a couple of aging related issues that we're working on um, uh, at this point. And again, we have one meeting in July, one meeting in August, and then back to two, the two meeting schedule, two voting meeting schedule in September. The other probably major thing, which I think I mentioned in the past, this is a quadrennial budget that we have in the county. It's a four year um, kind of budget. I don't wanna say we set the budget for four years, but we really plan it out four years in advance um, so that we understand what our structural versus non-structural liabilities are and commitments are uh, so that decisions we make for the immediate upcoming fiscal year we can see what the impact of those would be in the future. And this, this year is the year where we, we really take a deeper dive into the four-year cycle and really set the next four years uh, kind of as a baseline. So a lot of our working session time, um, which is that, that 5.30 meeting that occurs before the voting meeting has been dedicated to uh, various aspects of, of the county budget. So with that, I will, um, stop talking and be happy to answer any questions uh, the, to the best of my ability this way. Oh, one thing I do want to mention, um, on Tuesday, this past Tuesday, uh, some of you may know or may have heard um, that the first broadband connection was made in the county with, with under the new broadband gap filling project that we approved last year. Um, so the first resident was connected uh, in Lima Township, uh, their speed went from nothing to uh, 200 up and 500 down. So they're like warp speed internet service now. Um, really excited to, to note that um, that was done and impacts people of all ages. Um, but as, as this body knows, uh, has a significant impact for those who are older adults as well. So we look forward over the next several years to to rolling out this project to what end, could end up being, you know, 9,000 different addresses. So um, number one was completed on Tuesday and uh, we're really excited to, to keep moving forward with that. Um, I do have a question for you, Jason. We were saving uh, the August 19th meeting to talk about ARPA uh, proposals. Are you suggesting that we don't need to save that meeting? Um, to talk about it in what sense, Marta? In terms of beginning to implement um, the proposal that we had put forward, um, you know, I, I wouldn't necessarily cancel it just yet. Okay. 
Um, I, I, I think that well, let's let's see what happens at the leadership meeting later this month in terms of what happens with, you know, we could potentially get a package on our July meeting. I, I don't want to just completely eliminate that possibility. So I, I would leave it the way it is right now. Okay, that's fair. Um, we're just trying to have an organized system of setting aside time on the agenda for that every other meeting and uh, have presentations the other uh, opposite meetings you've probably seen the tentative uh, meeting schedule so mm -hmm. we're working on that okay so uh, who has uh, things they want to ask Jason please raise your hand and I'll call on you one by one wow you're gonna let me off easy. I like this. <laughs> no, you were quite thorough. It was very, very good of me. Uncharacteristically silent group. Okay, moving right along. Um, oh, Jason, are you gonna be with us for the duration or what time do you have to? Run? I believe as of right now, unless something comes up, I'm here till at least 9.15 and possibly longer. Excellent, thank you. Right. Um, okay, next on the agenda is approval of the minutes. Uh, do I have a motion? I'll move, Marie moves. Okay, and who supports? Elizabeth? Elizabeth Thompson supports. Okay. Um, when you're ready, you can call the roll. Thanks. Um, Marta Larson? Yes. Marie Gress? Yes. Bonnie Weber? Yes. Elizabeth Thompson? Yes. Stephen Stein? Yes. Bennett Stark? Yes. Margaret Reynolds. Yes. Uh, Jason Maciejewski. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Um, next on the agenda is subcommittee updates and we'll start with communications. That would be Marie. Yeah, we worked with the officers to make this uh, calendar that you got in your packets. Um, one, so we can be on the same page about when, um, yeah, just a really effective communication tool, when we're meeting, what the topics uh, are, who um, potentially who is the gonna be the coordinator of that presentation opportunity, um, who requested it and when it was requested, all of that, that good information. So um, any questions about it? Super. Okay. Uh, and needs assessment would also be you, Marie. Um, the only update that I have is that we moved to a summer schedule. So we're meeting once a month at the end of the month. Uh, we are looking for an additional uh, Commission on Aging representative. Right now it's myself and Margie uh, and then another community member, but um, we're trying to have three Commission on Aging members on these subcommittees. Is there anyone here who would like to volunteer? Just keep it in mind. See, we have a good time. We do. <laughs> yeah, you know, if you were meeting in person, you could offer food or something, but I don't know. <laughs> That's all right. Okay. Um, can everyone keep that in mind that they are looking for a third person? Um, next on the uh, subcommittee update list is ARPA and that would be Bonnie. Oh, I'm just so excited to hear Jason's report today. So we are just waiting for the Board of Commissioners to see what comes out. So that was very good news. So we're still just waiting. Okay. And the fourth item is potential millage. Elizabeth? Uh, we uh, have scheduled some time to uh, the officers, I believe, to meet with uh, uh, some folks from Say Yes to Seniors. Um, I'm afraid I'm a little disorganized getting in very late last night from being on the, the West Coast. I apologize. I had to deal with some issues with my mother-in-law. Um, uh, and also, uh, some of our members have asked to do a deep dive into uh, the materials that we received uh, from 
the different counties that we interviewed um, uh, several months ago. So Ellen and I are working to compile who were the members who are on the, the committee at that point are working to, to compile that information for the other folks. And then eventually you can share that with the entire commission? Yes. Perfect. Um, and I would like to re uh, remind everyone, it's noted on the agenda, but you know, you know that we're having a presentation from Say Yes to Seniors coming up on July 15th. Um, if you have any advanced questions you would like to make sure that they address, uh, you need to get those questions to the officers by the 1st of July. That doesn't mean you won't be able to ask questions during the presentation, but as always, we'd like to see the presenters be as prepared as possible. So if you have any particularly burning questions that you know you're going to want to ask, if you could let them know in advance, that would be awesome. I would recommend letting the coordinator of, of that topic know. Um, it's not always going to be the officers coordinating those presentations. Um, so forward your questions to the coordinator listed on that topic. That would be Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. And July 1st is housing and that's Stephen Stein. Yeah, so we're running up short on that deadline. Um, so if you have any questions on housing, get those to Stephen uh, immediately if you can. Um, Bennett, you had a question or a comment? Yeah, do we know who will be presenting uh, from Say Yes to Seniors? Allison Foreman, the chair of the group. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Bonnie, you have your hand up? Yeah. Um, the officers talked about the format with the presentations and and letting the presenters know ahead of time any questions to prepare. So this is going to be a kind of a common three thread that we're going to do for the rest of the year, right, Marta and Marie, to give the presenters the biggest heads up that they can have um, and come the best prepared that they can come. So truly, if you do have questions, please send them to the person that's that is the coordinator of it so that um, we can utilize our time and the presenters will have a heads up of what we're interested in. So, Bennett. So I assume that Allison Barman is, uh, as the chair, is the coordinator? No. No, um, listed on the tentative meeting schedule document that you received, July 15th, the topic is say yes to seniors, and then the coordinator would be Elizabeth Thompson. Oh, okay. Thank you again. Mm -hmm. the, the format that we set up was that the um, chair, uh, that a member of the subcommittee that that is in the, in, that the presentation is in the jurisdiction of, or the person who put forward the topic have been named as the coordinator. So, um, you can you know look at the list to see who is who is who for each uh, particular presentation. Stephen, I see your your hand. Yeah, just can you remind me the uh, amount of time you want the speaker to speak, and then how much time for questions? I think it would be uh, probably about fifteen to twenty minutes, um, and then allow a similar amount of time for questions and answers. And those are kind of mushy numbers, but approximate numbers. Unless anyone else disagrees with that. Right? Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty much what the officers were thinking. And of course, if the discussion runs longer, then it will run longer and we may have to stop at some point and you know agree to meet again at a future meeting. So to recap, if you have questions for Say Yes to Seniors presentation, get that to Elizabeth by July 1st. If you have questions for the housing meeting that Stephen is uh, coordinating, please get them to him right away. And that will be the Housing Bureau for Seniors as the presenter. Um, we didn't have that on the schedule, but it'll be Housing Bureau for Seniors doing that presentation. Okay. Um, Marta Bennett has his hand up. Oh, Bennett? Okay, well, um, I um, let Will Purvis know 
that Center for Independent Living is scheduled to uh, make tentatively scheduled a presentation, uh, I believe on September 2nd. So um, are there, is that too far ahead for any, you know, instructions? Center for Independent Living uh, scheduled tentatively uh, to give a presentation on September 2nd. I would, I would think mid-July, you could reach out to him, um, give him an update on, <clears throat> on, on how long, any of the details really uh, for the presentation. Um, because September is a far way out and things things could change, but we do also want Center for Independent Living to have <laughs> adequate time to prepare. Thank you. And we will need to see their presentation by two officer meetings pre in, in advance so that we can, you know, have a look at it. The officers will need to have a look at their presentation. Okay. Well, that's a very important uh... Yeah, I'll share the script that I used to invite the other, these first three groups. I'll share that script with everyone. So if you ever have to do that invitation, like you're doing Bennett for the Center of Independent Living, then you have all of those details. Well, actually, when did you send that out, Marie? Uh, I have not sent it out to the Center for Independent Living. Um, I spent this last little bit making sure we had through July scheduled appropriately. But you sent it out to the commissioners? No, I'm saying I will send it okay. out. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, appreciate the mm -hmm. uh, addition. So I think at this point, are we saying that Bennett uh, is coordinating that particular presentation? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, Congratulations, you. Bennett, you're in charge. <laughs> yeah, you're well, in charge. Thank you. Um, it's good to know if I have a responsibility. Yep. And uh, without oh, that, I wouldn't know. Okay. Okay, excellent. Anything else on this particular item, agenda item? Okay, we're gonna move ahead then to the transportation presentation. I should note that uh, Fionix, Fionix Mobility is also going to be speaking after AAATA. Um, so the, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have the presentation from AAATA. Then we'll address questions and discussions. Then we'll have the presentation from Fionix and have questions and discussion. And then we'll have a complete recap of the entire topic questions and discussion, if that suits everyone. So without further ado, who is here from AAATA? Tracy is. So Marie, would you introduce her? Um, I don't, I didn't get much of a bio from you for an introduction, Tracy, but Tracy is here from the Ann Arbor Area Transportation Authority. Um, we're, we're excited about the presentation you have for us. You should be able to share your screen uh, with the slides or I can pull up the slides and do that for you. Can you pull up the slides? You know, I am just very um, inept. Um, <laughs> yeah, I can Two years after we've started doing Zoom, I'm still inept at all of this, so. All right, go thank ahead you. and get started while I pull those up. Okay, and, and I do want to say um, thank you for, for inviting um, the ride here today. Um, and I, I will say that Mr. Carpenter will be doing part of the presentation talking about the millage that we're proposing. And unfortunately, he is on another call at nine o'clock. So I don't know, I don't want to change your agenda. I will go ahead and start. But if Rebecca steps in in the middle or if you want Rebecca to speak first I, I'm okay with that too. Um, and what's the name of the second person who will be joining us? Matt Carpenter who is our CEO at the ride. Matt Carpenter? Mm -hmm. okay, I want to make sure we have the minutes correct. Okay. So okay. but I can go ahead and get started. Yeah. Um, uh, again my name is Tracy Bird and I am the Travel, my, my title is travel trainer, but I also do the A ride or paratransit eligibility, and I'm the um, modification, uh, regional modification coordinator for the ride. So, a few hats. And what I want to talk to you about today, I think you invited us uh, to talk about what services that public transportation has for, for older adults in the community. So, I'd like to start off by talking about um, Gold Ride. And Gold Ride is 
Uh, here, let me go ahead and it, are you able to pull up my slides? Yeah, is my screen sharing? Yes. Yes. Okay, okay great. Val. Um, perfect. Um, I, I, I actually, I meant to do this. I, I did a condensed version because I like to talk versus just reading. So uh, if you have questions, I always do very loose and uh, um, very relaxed presentations. Gold Ride is a program for any person 65 or older in the community. And um, what Gold Ride does, it allows seniors to ride when they show their ID card, they can um, ride our public buses free of charge. It also does provide a shared ride service um, anywhere within our bus service area. Uh, for those of you who may have uh, been familiar with Gold Ride prior to 2020, we provided shared ride services within the city limits of Ann Arbor and small parts of Pittsfield Township. But to make it more equitable, we are going into the city of Ypsilanti and parts of Ypsilanti Township, as you can see. Now, the prices you probably heard um, have been adjusted, which means that the price for Gold Ride is $20 each way. However, we do have a program for um, older adults who might income qualify um, can pay $5 each way. Um, we work with about 30 uh, community partners to help um, qualify individuals who might income qualify for, for um, the reduced fare. Off the top of my head, I should have that actually uh, for one person, the reduced fare or the reduced, um, uh, the income limits is $19,300 um, annually. Um, and then, of course, the Gold Ride does provide uh, service within three fourths of the month of, of fixed bus routes within, again, Ann Arbor, Ypsilanti, Ypsilanti Township, and Pittsfield Township. Um, and then we have a program called A Ride. And A Ride is known in the community, um, depending on who you talk to. Um, some people call it A Ride, some people call it the Green Card, um, but it is a paratransit program. Excuse me. And paratransit is for individuals who, because of a disability, are either prevented from or substantially limited from riding regular fixed bus routes. Now, it is not age-based. Um, it's based upon, again, the ability to or inability to get to a bus stop, walk to a bus stop, wait at a bus stop, navigate the bus system. Um, and it is, again, a shared ride service, and it's an origin to destination base, so meaning that it picks individuals up at their location, such as their home, and then takes them to Knight Steakhouse or the movies or their doctor. Um, all of our uh, transportation is provided in accessible vans, um, so any, any, type, any type of mobility aid that someone has will fit on our vehicles. Now, um, again, because Gold Drive is age-based, um, individuals just have to show proof of age um, to apply. For a ride, it is a little bit, um, a little bit uh, longer of a process. It is there is an application that is completed by the applicant or someone on their behalf, and then there's a portion that is completed by the medical professional. Again, it's not a medical decision, but because we do paper applications, it helps with the process as far as um, seeing what someone's abilities are at, or more so um, important, what their limitations are in writing the regular fixed bus route. Um, of course, anybody can get an application by calling um, our office here at the ride, by going on our website. We can send that to you. Um, the, the process for that is once a, a completed application is received in our office, the processing is done within 21 days. So you see a little, little bit different there. Um, we also offer, um, I think, let's see my next slide. Um, so yep, uh, FlexRide, I'm gonna just touch on this. Um, FlexRide is open to the public, but I also, it is a great connector service for individuals for the east sides, that's uh, Flex Ride East is for Ypsilanti Township, and then Flex Ride West is for Pittsfield Township. And that helps connect individuals to um, a regular line bus 
or in the case of uh, Ypsilanti area, the flex right east, it actually connects them to, um, again, a fixed route bus or to the Ypsilanti Transit Center, which does assist. We have a lot of people who live outside a, an area where it's feasible or safe to be able to walk to a, to a fixed bus route. Again, that's open to the public, but I, I wanted to add that in briefly because it does assist um, seniors who are part of the public. Um, the last thing I want to talk about very quickly is uh, travel training. Again, I told you that I'm the travel trainer here at the ride. Um, I work with individuals, um, I will say of all ages, I do have the minimum um, age in which I work with individuals, which is 14, but my most mature client was 97. Um, and I teach how to ride the regular fixed bus route. So for people who um, for, for older adults, for persons with disabilities who might want to learn the fixed bus route system and are a little nervous, um, I do an array of different types of training. I do group trainings, I do individual, um, I, I, I do classroom trainings. Um, so whatever, whatever the need of the customer is, I, I do, I meet them at their home, we walk to the bus stop, wait and ride the bus together. So. Um, that's in a nutshell what I do. I know I've spoken very quickly, but I was told that we had like 15 minutes between the two or three of us to speak. So um, if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, I will tell you that um, I'm always, I'm, I always welcome phone calls. Um, I do like to give to the disclosure that I am away from my desk more than I'm at my desk. If I'm doing my job right, I'm away from my desk. That means I'm out on the road. Um, but I do always return phone calls promptly. Um, but of course, you can always call the ride's main office um, and get information um, from them or call a ride customer service. And I have the number there or visit our website. And I see Bonnie has a question. Yes, um, I wanted to ask you about the A-Ride. Um, you didn't touch on the cost of that. Oh, you, you know what? You're right. I didn't. A-Ride, the cost of A-Ride is $3 each way. And um, we didn't just arbitrarily come up with that amount. Um, $3 is under uh, the FTA, Federal Transit Administration and ADA guidelines, states that paratransit can no, cannot be more than double of what the regular um, fixed route cost is. So it's $1.50 if you pay full price to ride the regular fixed bus route. So $3 each way for paratransit. Um, I also want to stress that for individuals who qualify for a rider paratransit, they could possibly have um, a personal care attendant or a PCA um, to ride with them. There is a form that goes along with the application. Um, and if they do qualify for a PCA, the PCA can ride for free as well. Thank and you. Elizabeth first, and I think, and then Bennett. I could you give us a bit of a sense for a ride about the um, types of disabilities or mobility impairment that might um, qualify somebody for a ride versus gold ride? Well, um, it is. It, it, let me start by answering it this way, Elizabeth. Sometimes I, I get a lot of questions, especially with when we switched over the gold ride program and how we changed it, um, you know, I had a lot of individuals, especially older adults saying, I don't have a disability. You know, I've never been on disability. I don't have a disability. I am not going to qualify. And I always tell them, well, let's have a conversation about this first. And um, do you have difficulty walking? Sometimes do you, might, might you have knee problems or you know, like me, I, I have arthritis in my knees and my hips. And I know probably as time goes by, that might become a little bit more debilitating. Um, so if I say, you know, if you have, you have maybe some difficulty with your knees, with your hips, oh yes, I have osteoarthritis. Okay, so what's it like on the worst day? How far are you able to walk? Are you able to walk around your home? Are you able to walk to the, to the mailbox? Are you, you know, how far can you walk? Oh, my worst day ever, I don't even get out of bed. You know, I said, okay, you know, that's, so this is the start of a conversation. I understand you don't have a disability. However, your mobility might um, be a hindrance to having you walk 
that walk or two walks to the nearest bus stop. Um, because you have um, maybe, um, just because you have a mobility aid does not mean you necessarily qualify for paratransit. But, um, you know, how you use your mobility aid, such as um, maybe you're a wheelchair user, you have an electric wheelchair, you go everywhere you need to go. However, what if you need to go places where there are no sidewalks or there are sidewalks in poor repair or um, curb cuts in poor repair? You may not be able to get there by regular fixed bus route. That could possibly qualify you. Um, if you have, um, I work with a lot of individuals with cognitive delays or cognitive disabilities who may have no difficulties walking to or waiting at a regular bus stop, but they're not able to independently navigate a bus, the bus system. Um, it can be kind of confusing. Um, in that case, I actually do travel training and sometimes I might work with an individual and train them how to get to a location, maybe a work program. So they can get back and forth to work on the bus, but if they had to go, if they wanted to go to movies, if they had to go to the doctor, if they wanted to go to a friend, they wouldn't necessarily be able to pick up a route guide and be able to navigate. Um, so they could possibly take paratransit for that. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank okay. you. Great, great. And I, I know Bennett had, you didn't have your hand up, but you, yeah. Yeah, well, okay, um, I used, um, I guess it was a ride um, just last week. I had an appointment at U of M. Now I didn't pay anything. Uh, I have a card. Now, um, can you explain? Because I don't think that, um, do I have a, <clears throat> does that make sense to you that uh, when I boarded the bus, I showed my card? Okay. Okay, yeah. So um, do you have, um, do you have a, well, I, I, I don't want to ask personal questions. Um, uh, maybe this, maybe before. this could happen after. Okay. The... Well, I, I, you know what, let me ask, let me answer in a general question or general statement. For individuals who have a card, sometimes they, people call it the gold strike card, gold ride, senior card, right? Um, so if you have a gold stripe at the bottom of your card or a green stripe at the bottom of the card you can ride our regular fixed bus routes free of charge. Okay. At this time. I will say one thing. Well, I'm gonna be 82 in a week or so. Mm -hmm. I am thankful uh, that I was able to um, get a bus ride to and fro. Um, one thing I will say that um, for people who are not very steady in their, um, that the a bus trip can be quite uh, risky because as one might think every time a stop is made and then the bus starts again, uh, you're talking about a fragile situation for many seniors. Right, and that's where I suggest, I, I don't tell people what they have to apply for. Um, I just like to educate people what's available in the area and, and that, if, if somebody says that they are substantially limited or prevented from riding the bus because of a, a, a gate instability or fall risk, um, a higher fall risk, we'll say, um, I, would, I would really recommend applying for a ride. Um, again, because maybe, once again, if you're riding to a location and you're getting on, you have a bus stop in front of your home and you're able to get to that bus stop, you know, I'm very, I'm very fortunate I live a half a block from a bus stop. Um, I can get on a bus and say, go to Briarwood Mall and I get off right there at the mall in the parking lot, right? But if I needed to go to, let's say, um, Domino Farms or East Ann Arbor Medical Center, that, that might provide a challenge for me um, if I have a gait instability or am I a fall risk? Um, so then that might be a case that paratransit might work better for me. Okay, thank you. Thank You're you. You're welcome. And I don't know who had your hand up first, Bonnie or Jason. Let Jason go first because he's got limited time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. I was I was curious to know a little bit more about how you coordinate with Wave, uh, and, and the services in the western part of the county. Okay, so our public buses meet up with um, the Wave buses. Um, 
you know, off the top of my head, I believe it's nine minutes and 39 minutes after each hour um, at Meyer on Jackson Road. Now, as far as our services connecting, a lot of times if individuals are um, coming in, say from Dexter, Chelsea area, um, they might take wave into our service area. If they're not able then to connect to ride the public buses and they qualify for a ride, um, they can connect with wave at say Meyer. our last stop, three fourths of a mile beyond Meyer is actually the front door at Menards. Um, so that's, we can go as far as Menards on Jackson Road, Jackson Stable, I believe. Um, and then they can take paratransit from there. Um, I do actually work with mostly, not older adults, but mostly um, students who are coming in from WISD. I work with a lot of uh, teachers and teacher consultants with WISD, um, getting students to and from um, Ann Arbor that way. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. And Bonnie. Can you tell me what days you can schedule for Gold Ride and days you can schedule for A Ride? Seven days a week. Um, Gold Ride is actually done through a contractor. Um, so you would, they would have to contact the contractor directly. Once somebody gets Gold Ride, they do get the number um, to call. Um, a Golden Limousine is our, is our provider. Um, so they do all of their own scheduling. And then for a ride, the scheduling is done Monday through Friday between the hours of 8 and 5.30, and then weekends 8 to 5. Um, you can call up to, um, you do need to schedule advanced appointments for a ride. Um, so one day in advance or up to three days in advance. Okay, because um, a long time ago, um, we couldn't get weekend service for my mom. We lived in Pittsfield, so. Oh, 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 you know, and thank you for mentioning that, Bonnie. Yes, um, A-Ride runs, it runs parallel or mirrors regular fixed bus route. So anywhere that a bus goes, our paratransit runs. Now, if you are in our base service area, thank you for mentioning that because I did misspeak. I apologize. Our base service area runs seven days a week. There are some areas that are outside our base service area, um, which base service area means um, Ann Arbor and Ypsilanti. Um, anywhere where a bus is, you can get paratransit. If there is not a bus on the weekends, then their paratransit would not be available. There are parts there, yes, Pittsfield Township is a Monday through Friday service that is 6.30 to 6.30. Okay, so Pittsfield is just Monday through Friday still? Yes, it is. Out, Pittsfield outside the base service area. Um, and what I mean by that is um, anything south of Ellsworth Road. Yeah, that's where I am. <laughs> so there's some, some parts of Pittsfield Township, right? Like Carpenter Place Apartments, Meyer on Carpenter Road. Um, anything that's three fourths of a mile beyond uh, that stop. So technically- Yeah, I'm one <laughs> mile, exactly one mile from the bus stop, yep. Are there plans to expand that, even if using contractors like Golden Limousine? Um, that would be something that is outside my purview right now to be able to, okay. to answer. But Mr. Carpenter, I see he's on the call now, might be able to answer that as well. Okay, before we go on to Mr. Carpenter, um, I see Jason still has his hand up, or did, did you just forget to take it down? I'm sorry, I forgot to take it down. I'll do it right now. Sorry. Okay. Um, in the interest of equal treatment, since you talked about how A-Ride um, and AAATA works with WAVE, can you also talk about People's Express, which is another bus service that serves a num number of townships and areas within the county? You know, I, um, we, I, I don't necessarily, um, how can I say this? Um, we do partner with People's Express. Um, they do service what... Um, Pittsfield, uh, uh, Celine in Northfield townships. A lot of times um, I will recommend um, for individuals who live outside our service area, who live in Celine to contact um, People's Express. But as far as um, their in and outs of their program, I'm, I'm not able to speak of that. So you have a, a collaborative working relationship with WAVE, but not with People's Express. Is that fair to say? I, I, I wouldn't just say, a, 
Um, Mr. Carpenter, do you want to jump in on that one? I don't know exactly how to answer that. Sure. That question. Uh, well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for your time. I'm I'm apologize. I was being late. I had to start off a staff training uh, exercise at 9 a.m. this morning. Um, so, very. I'll try to answer all these questions very quickly. Um, Michigan relies very heavily on property taxes to local jurisdictions and forces transit agencies to do that as well. So this means we kind of go community by community in setting things up. So Pittsfield Township, I think it was Bonnie who had a question uh, about service, A-Ride service south of Ellsworth. North of Ellsworth, we have the fixed route buses, the scheduled service as Tracy was talking about. Federal law says we must provide paratransit that complements the fixed route service. If fixed route runs seven days a week, starting at 10 a.m., paratransit has to do the same. Three quarters of a mile away from that, those federal laws no longer apply. In the case of Pittsfield Township, um, we, we kind of have a contractual relationship with the Township Board of Supervisors, and they kind of pay as you go they sort of decide what level of transit service they pay for south of Ellsworth. And, and we, we may be the person who provides that or the agency that provides that. Uh, with People's Express, I, I talk to Doug on a pretty regular basis. Uh, I think any opportunity to collaborate operationally, both of us would be interested in. I think his, uh, his territory, frankly, is just a very different uh, than ours. Uh, uh, there is some overlap, but he also serves people who are sort of coming into, I think, specific destinations in Ann Arbor. I think from, from Northfield Township, I think he, he carries some people commuting to the hospital. Um, and he doesn't need to worry about transfers with us. If they ever did, I'm sure Doug would give us a call and we'd work something out, but I'm just not sure that it's been a priority up to now. I was just interested because it looked like you have a, a, a specific point where WAVE connects with AAATA out at Menards or yeah. Mines, and I just wondered if you had a similar arrangement with People's Express. I think that's mostly because WAVE has a fixed route that comes from right. Chelsea to Menards, uh, or yeah, Menards, and then Myers. Um, People's Express, I don't think, operates the same way. Uh, they're a bit more flexible. so. Uh, the transfers would happen kind of all over the place. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. Bennett, you have your hand up. Okay. Uh, this is a question that uh, um, I don't know whether it relates only to uh, Gold Ride or A Rod, but one of the problems that I've observed over the last whatever six months is I live in Lurie Terrace and there are about 120 people that live there. I have never seen one individual on a using a walker or whatever wheelchair who dares to cross the street on Euron and Chapin because the automobiles are going at 50 miles an hour or thereabouts. So that is a, a obstacle um, in terms of getting a bus. It's not an obstacle for me because I'm one of the fortunate people that really is pretty steady in walking and or whatever. So um, I'd like to know whether you're aware that there are likely other places as well that um, the homebound or whatever the disabled uh, will not um, have the good fortune to use uh, a ride and gold ride. Well, they, uh, um, if I could answer that, they could use a ride because a ride comes to the parking lot of Lori Terrace. Um, okay, I'm talking about the bus. Thank you. Thank the bus. You. Okay, so. Um, in, in that case, if somebody wants to ride the bus, and I know that it, it would be a little bit um, longer of a route for them, um, but if they were not able, they wanted to take the bus, they weren't able to, my suggestion would be to hop on the bus that is in front of Lori Terrace at that stop at the bottom of the hill, um, ride the loop around um, if they're trying to get downtown, um, just ride the loop around um, and that, you know, that might get them where they need to go if they didn't want to, um, book an A-Ride trip, 
or if they're not comfortable in crossing the street? Well, I do have a question. Um, we do have meetings at Lurie Terrace. We have a residency council. Uh -huh. And if I were to tell them that this is um, an alternative, how long would the loop around involve? Um, you know, and it's funny you said that because I was just at Lurie Terrace this last fall and did an A-Ride and Gold Ride presentation. So um, maybe I'll be invited back. I usually go to places annually. Um, let's just see how long I'm looking at a bus schedule. That's what I'm looking at. And while Tracy is looking that up, um, uh, I'd like to add something. So if the concern is the pedestrian crossing signals are not adequate and that some people are gonna need more time to get across the street. Cause that is, if you're going downtown, the bus stop is right across the street from Lori Terrace, but you do have to cross the sidewalk. Um, if the problem is the crossing signal, that is definitely something for your residence group to bring to the attention of the city's transportation department, because they can change the timing of that, I believe. Um, if the problem is even with that signal, someone cannot walk to the bus stop, that is a sign for us that maybe they need to be eligible for the A-ride, which will come to the door. So that, that those are sort of two different ways to, to get at that issue. Okay, well, I would say thank you for um, that. And I would also tell you that ad infinitum, we have appealed to the city. We have a meeting every week, uh, speak to a cop, that's the name of it. And we've gotten nowhere with the city. You have basically 16 seconds to cross. And for many folks, they won't dare do that. But uh, thank you. And to answer your question, Ben, it's about 20 minutes. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Marie, did you have a question? Yeah, but more of a comment on the collaborative work that AAATA does with the other services like People's Express. AAATA, when I was in service provision working for a nonprofit with uh, transportation services, I participated in the Transportation Coordinating Council. Um, AAATA received funds such as specialized services and 5310, and then distributed that money to agencies such as People's Express. I was working for Milan Seniors for Healthy Living at the time and other agencies. So I just wanted to, to speak to some of that collaborative nature that exists throughout the county when there's not that fixed point. I don't know if there's anything additional you wanna share about the group, Mr. Carpenter, but. Um. We, you know, Julia runs away. She's a phone call. Doug runs People's Express, uh, at least for now. I know he's thinking about retiring. Phone call away. Um, whenever a customer calls up, I know we just, we start calling each other. Staff start calling each other to see uh, what we can do so that no one slips through the cracks. That said, each agency has different funding from different sources with a slightly different mission. Uh, and so there are moments where, you know, there's there's a, a gap in coverage for everybody and we work as best we can with local authorities to try to do that. Uh, but yes, the ride does pass through a great deal of funding as well. So that's something worth considering. I did have a follow up question on the Lurie Terrace um, uh, issue. Um, I believe that Lurie Terrace um, in the back of that building backs up to Miller Road. Does AAATA have a fixed route that goes into town along Miller Road? Yes. Would it be possible? Is there a bus stop there for that? Could people go from Lurie Terrace to the back where they would not have to cross a road and just pick up the bus there to head into town? It might be a little bit longer of a walk um, up Chapin. Wait. Um, Chapin on that side, correct? Yeah, the building doesn't back onto Miller. There's at least a block walk. Uh, to Miller, but yes, there's bus service on Miller right at Chapin. So if, if they wanted to walk a different way and they could make the, the trip, yes, that's a different option. I guess I was just trying to address the issue of people that can walk but are too terrified to cross here on. Mm -hmm. Did yeah. you have something to add to that? Bennett? Well, I okay, I'm sort of at a loss. Uh, maybe I'm missing something. 
I would say in the seven years that I've lived here, I've never seen a city bus with one of these, you know, you can put your bike on the back, come to the back of Lurie Terrace. That would uh, create, that would be wonderful. And you'd, uh, but am I missing something? Is- I don't believe those services, I think they just, A-Ride, and Tracy, correct me if I'm wrong, A-Ride, is the vehicle that you would see coming to the front door of Lori Terrace. Yes. I can't, we would never go to the rear of the building. Um, we do have fixed route bus service on Huron okay. Street and Miller, both of okay. which you know have some walking issues associated with them. But if anyone cannot make those walks, okay. that would be part of the eligibility for the front door service. Okay, thank you, Matt, That that is correct. You can board a bus, a city bus. The problem is you can't get off the city bus uh, without uh, hazarding a, for someone with walking difficulties, crossing um, Euron. That's the problem, not getting onto the bus. Well, yeah. I, I would yeah. also suggest then just staying and looping around until it comes back around Lori Terrace on that side. And okay. I think okay. That Thank you. That was, that's the alternative, but at least we clarified it. And I, I will say that we do also have the senior shopping bus that comes directly to Lori Terrace on Tuesdays. Um, every Tuesday, um, it, it actually makes a loop around um, Ann Arbor. Um, picking up different, uh, at different senior communities um, and takes them directly to a grocery store. Um, off the top of my head, I cannot tell you, I believe the first Tuesday of the month it's Kroger and the remainder of the Tuesdays it's Meyer. but we're probably getting in a lot of the weeds on this right now. And I know Mr. Carpenter has, um, has, has a presentation as well as Rebecca and I, I wanna be respectful of everyone's time. Thank you, thank you. Okay, um, I'm going to um, suggest that calling on people with questions be reserved to the chair rather than the speaker. So um, I see that Elizabeth, you had your hand up. Did you take it back down again? Do you have something? Yes, because I was wondering if we could broaden the conversation perhaps a bit. And I know Mr. Carpenter has a presentation and there are other presentations to mm -hmm. go. One thing I would like to hear as these go forward is in addition to talking about the wonderful services you provide, if, right, if you can identify some gaps that there are things you would really like to see happen, but there just aren't the funds to do it. Mm -hmm. Do you want them to address that now, are you saying, Elizabeth? I was wondering if in the process of the presentation, that might be a, a question in the back of their heads. Okay, I think what we're going to do is we're going to ask Mr. Carpenter to show his presentation and hopefully address some of that. And then if it's still a question, we will um, loop back to that. And Elizabeth, will you help me remember so I don't forget to loop back? If sure. Answered. Thank you. So Mr. Carpenter, would you go ahead, please? Well, thank you so much. I, I, I really appreciate it. And yes, Elizabeth, I think I can answer some of your uh, uh, what are the gaps questions with, with some of the, the information I can present now. So. Uh, what I'd like to uh, talk to you guys about or, or uh, help uh, uh, convey is information about some of our plans, uh, both our long range and short range plans. And so um, now who's controlling the slides? Anne Marie. Uh, Mary, Mary, can you go to the next one, please? Would you prefer to control your own slides, Mr. Carpenter? Let's just let give it a run and Mary, every time I touch my nose, that means <laughs> go to the next slide. Okay, uh, it's, Marie. So, it's Marie. Marie, excuse me. Uh, so a couple of key points about the information we're gonna talk about. First of all, transit and transportation, you know, it's not a means in and of itself. We use transportation to get to opportunities, whether they're social, work, medical, shopping, whatever those are. So public transit and agencies like the Ride and People's Express and Wave, we exist to help others do their good work. That we're sort of supporting a piece of the agency or the or of the community rather. 
Uh, and what we do benefits uh, uh, everyone in the community one way or another, directly or indirectly, but especially anybody with mobility limitations or economic challenges for whom owning and operating a car is a bit of a problem. So what I'm gonna go through today very quickly, uh, a little bit about our long range plan, a little bit about our millage proposal that is on the ballot uh, for this August. It is a five year 2.38 mil uh, proposal to maintain and expand public transit services. It does replace a pre-existing millage, so the net increase is only 1.68. Uh, it will expand access to housing and services across the Ann Arbor and Ypsilanti areas, and yes, a little bit into Fitzfield as well. Um, and one interesting thing about um, the ride from a financial point of view, we're one of the agencies that can tap outside federal and state funding that is only available for transit. So for every dollar of local taxes uh, that we're entrusted with, we can leverage another dollar and 40 cents in state and federal money. So if the community gives us a dollar, we can provide $2 and 40 cents with the service. It's a good deal. Uh, there, yeah, great. We're, we're, see Marie and I are on, in sync. This is great. Uh -huh. <laughs> so uh, where do the, the driving forces and values and goals for our work come from? It really comes from the community. Uh, our board of directors gives us a single set of marching orders, but they are distilled down from the policy documents and things that are important to our member uh, municipalities, the city of Ann Arbor, the city of Ypsilanti, Ypsilanti Township. We, of course, pay great attention to surrounding communities as well. And the, the three main goals that our board has asked us to advance are things like social equity, access to jobs, education, and housing, helping the environment, reducing air pollution, and supporting existing and new businesses. And that really comes down uh, to sort of workforce mobility and, and connecting workers to jobs. So I want to talk about the millage proposal. Before I do, I want to put it in a little bit of context. We also have a long range plan that's being developed. The long range plan is a 25 year uh, vision for how public transit is going to be improved. Elizabeth, to your big question, have we thought about the gaps? Oh yes, extensively. We, uh, we've talked to over 4,000 people in the community, conducted telephone surveys, a variety of other things. We've been working on the big picture now for a couple of years. Uh, we're very close to finalizing that plan. Uh, and that really identifies all of the gaps, all of the opportunities that we've heard from the community that people would like us to to, to fill opportunities, uh, but it's a 25 year plan. And the laws of Michigan says that an agency like ours can only run five year millages. We can't do anything more than that. So a 25 year plan is five, five year millages in a row. The, this millage is really the first five years of that long range plan. So that's the context. Um, what does this millage proposal do? First of all, it maintains all the services we have today, the A-Ride, the fixed routes that we were just discussing. It provides expansion in several key areas. These are those gaps that we can fill right away. Back to Elizabeth's point, and I'll talk about that in a sec. There are 10 elements to this proposal, a lot of information online. I'll give you a way to, to find that, but I'll also go through them very quickly. There's 10 elements are organized into two buckets. Uh, the, serve, the funding needed to maintain our existing services and the funds needed to expand and fill in those gaps. So the first bucket and the first uh, four options or elements are really what do we need to maintain our existing services? So first we need to renew a naturally expiring 0.7 mil uh, millage that we first got in 2014. Uh, unfortunately, the ride does have a, a bit of a deficit. It's a, a projected deficit, so we need to get ahead of it, but we are asking the voters to help us uh, fill that in. Inflation is an issue, uh, as I think we're all aware of these days. Fuel uh, costs are certainly not something the ride is immune to. Uh, and then staffing. Uh, as we've tried to tighten our belts over the last several years, the office staff We've actually have 9% fewer positions in the office staff in the ride than we did six years ago. Uh, and although we've become very efficient, uh, I can tell the staff uh, can't quite meet all of the needs the community expresses. So people like Tracy going out to provide travel training, things like that. There's a lot of calls to do more of those sorts of things. So uh, some staffing allowances are built into that part as well. 
Then we come to key service expansions. These are those gaps, opportunities to uh, improve services. Some of these I think are very important uh, for anyone uh, on a, uh, uh, who uh, you know, might be over 65, but I'll talk about them all very quickly. Uh, the first one is a new express bus service to Ann Arbor and between Ann Arbor and Ypsilanti downtown to downtown. Right now that would take 45 minutes by bus. We can shorten that to 30 minutes. So that'd be a big improvement in travel time. For regular students at commuters, that can save over 100 hours a year in commuting time. So that's a big improvement. Um, longer hours of service across the entire bus system. This is something we hear very frequently from our traveling uh, customers and from the public, that the bus system shuts down too early uh, in some cases, and they'd like us to run later in the evenings, uh, a little earlier on Saturdays as well. Uh, so there's that. This is one I think is particularly important to uh, perhaps the seniors population. It's an increase in frequency of service on the weekends. A lot of people don't you know, work the traditional nine to five and they're shopping and, and doing medical appointments and social activities at different times of the week now than perhaps in the past. And so um, a bus that comes every 60 minutes on Sunday is a little hard to build your, your life around. You're kind of trapped to that, to that schedule. So we want to increase the frequency of the bus from every 60 minutes to every 30 minutes. So doubling the amount of bus service on the weekends. And this is important because it just allows us to have more freedom and flexibility and independence uh, when making our weekend travel plans. We have a couple of uh, initiatives that are specifically about equity uh, and particularly about racial and income equality. Uh, we have areas, uh, particularly on the east side of the, of the county, not exclusively there, but certainly there, uh, where we have see uh, concentrated poverty, where we see concentrated racial segregation and housing. Uh, the county has what we call an opportunity index, and you can see that on the background of this map here, which shows a little bit of Ann Arbor, but mostly Ypsilanti and Ypsilanti Township. The red areas, frankly, signify areas of concentrated poverty. Um, we have had an overnight service called Night Ride that has operated in Ann Arbor for many years. Um, and you see the, the area it serves in red, but it has never served the entirety of our operating area, uh, which includes most of the city of Ypsilanti and Ypsilanti Township. So we are proposing to expand this overnight service uh, into this uh, dotted yellow line area around Ypsilanti, uh, sort of outside the Willow Run, uh, area, the West Willow neighborhood, uh, and other parts of, 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 of the Ipsy Ipsy Township area. This is really an equity thing. Uh, it's an important social mobility thing. It will provide access, particularly for jobs and people looking for work uh, at, at, at you know, unusual and traditional hours. Um, the next one is uh, we've had customer service agents at our Blake Transit Center for many years. Perhaps some of you have engaged with them if you want to get your fair deal card, your gold card, uh, this is one place you can do that. Um, we've never had those agents at our bus terminal in Ypsilanti. I don't have a good answer for why. So we wanna change that. We wanna make sure that the people of Ypsilanti have access to the same services and programs that the folks in Ann Arbor do and providing a few staff in that facility will help us do that. Another element of this proposal, the final one, uh, is, is a set aside for major projects. And you can think of this as a sinking fund or a capital fund, uh, but we're very lucky in the United States that the federal government frequently will chip in for major infrastructure. And certainly with uh, the new uh, legislation the federal government has paid, there's a lot more opportunities for those uh, grants. However, those grants are always competitive. You, you don't just get the money by showing up. You have to hustle a little bit for it. And part of that is you have to bring some local money to the table in order to win grants for large projects. Uh, so we need to, at the ride, be able to bring uh, enough money to the table to be competitive uh, for these federal grants. These can be used for a variety of projects that are talked about in the long range plan uh, in the future. Things like expanded bus terminals, uh, bus rapid transit, uh, bus garages or zero emissions bus propulsion. We're doing a lot of work on that area as well. The picture you see here is for a um, uh, affordable housing complex that the Ann Arbor Housing Commission would like to build 
on the site of the old Y lot at 350 South Fifth across from the library downtown. It's a wonderful and very ambitious project. And if you squint down at the bottom, you can see there's a little bit of land put aside against the adjacent bus terminal to help us expand that bus terminal just a little bit and provide a better uh, passenger platform for everyone using the bus. Uh, we're really glad the Housing Commission has been able to help us do that. Um, but we're gonna have to be able to pay our way in this proposal. It's not for free. So uh, helping, uh, helping us collect some funds to be able to participate in these major projects is, is part of this proposal. So just in closing key points, uh, we really do see our, our job as supporting the good work of others, helping people get to work, social, medical, shopping activities, whatever you need to do, we wanna be there to help. Um, benefits everyone in the community, but certainly anybody with mobility limitations. Uh, the millage proposal specifically is a five-year 2.3 mil proposal. When we net out the 0.7 mil that's already there that this would replace, the, the actual increase is 1.68 mils. Uh, this is based on a lot of public input. We've been talking to people uh, all over our communities and regions now for about two years, and we've got pretty, pretty good, good support. This is the kind of thing people have asked us to do, so we're very hopeful. Um, it would provide a lot of access to expanded services and uh, other parts of the, the community, and it would help us leverage more of these outside funds. So with that, I believe my presentation, oh, just in closing, sorry. Uh, there's a lot more information online. This is just a taste. Uh, if you go to the ride.org uh, and navigate through there, you can find very detailed information about all of these proposals, including a table like this. I won't ask you to read this right now. We break down every element of this proposal. <clears throat> we define it very specifically. If you vote for this, what are you getting? We, we identify that very clearly. How much will it cost? how much the millage is going for it, and when does it start. On that point, I do wanna be clear that um, if we are successful this August with the voters, um, the funding would uh, not be collected until mid 2024. It's just a sort of weird way our millages work. Uh, so the funding uh, would not be collected until 2024, and then the services would start about a month later. So that's uh, it, I think, in closing. Uh, and Madam Chair, happy to answer any questions that there may be. Okay, well, the first, uh, I'd like you to specify who is gonna be voting and, and subject to this millage because your presentation did not say, is this a countywide millage, uh, et cetera? Thank you for that question. It's, a, it's a, an important one. Uh, because we have pursued countywide aspirations in the past, let me be clear. Uh, this is much more limited. The only voters who will be asked at the ballot are voters in Ann Arbor, City of Ypsilanti, and Ypsilanti Township. Okay, thank you. I see Bennett, and then after that, Bonnie. Okay, well, I'd just like to uh, repeat, um, living in um, Lurie Terrace, um, my concern are the residents, but I am also concerned about uh, folks uh, who are senior citizens throughout the county. Okay, I think the increase of services during the weekend uh, surely would be uh, very much desired uh, because folks um, do go to houses of worship and would like mm -hmm. to visit with uh, family members that they may have. My question is the increase of services on weekends is that already uh, in place or is that a proposal? So everything I just listed in here is a proposal. If the voters support this millage, uh, we would move to implement all of those proposals. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, thanks for, I guess, giving us a date uh, of August 2nd. And perhaps this would be a motivation for people to vote. It is in their interest to vote. Thank you, Matt. Okay, Bonnie. Yes, Matt, you, you mentioned early that you were working on your GAP proposal. I don't know if there's a confidentiality issue or not, but if you're able to share that with the commission after you're done, I think it would help us um, understand more, you know, the gaps that you have identified through your interviews with people in the county, it would, it would help us understand, you know, the, um, 
the, the, the folks in the county, you've done a, a great deal of, of research and we would like to be able to take advantage of that research just to bring our knowledge and understanding of transportation issues and transportation gaps in the area. So if you're able to share it, uh, we would appreciate it. Oh, no trouble. There's certainly no confidentiality with that. Um, I'll make sure it's all on our website right now, actually. Um, I will make sure a link gets sent to you today. Thank you. Okay, Bennett, do you still have your hand up um, by accident or on purpose? Um, delete it. Uh, yeah, okay. um, thank you very much. Okay, um, anybody else with, uh, okay, Margaret? Um, you mentioned you do not, the millage funds, if you're successful, would not be available <laughs> until 2024. Um, does your current millage extend into that? Or? Yes. Oh. Um, so our current millage will expire in 2023, uh, and the funds, residual funds from that would carry us into 2024. Uh, in time for the new funds to be collected and arrive. So uh, if, we, if we're successful this year, there, we don't anticipate any cash flow problems or disruption to existing services. Be a nice one goes out, the next one stops or starts in a nice seamless transition. Yeah, okay, thank you. So I, I think we'll ask um, both of you to, from AAATA to stand by while we hear from Phionix and then there may be more uh, questions that sort of come up from that that would be pertinent also to AAATA. So um, we'll uh, let Rebecca do her presentation. Do you still have time, Rebecca? I do have time. Um, okay, great. And I can also share my I can do my own presentation. <laughs> Super. Probably best. All right. Well, thank you all for having me. I'm very excited to share more about the um, AARP Ride at 50 Plus program in Washtenaw County. Just want to make sure that everyone can see my screen. Okay, yes. perfect. So um, I will go through this fairly quickly. So if you do have questions, you can ask me at the end. Um, but the AARP Ride at 50 Plus program is dedicated to enhancing access to transportation options in Washtenaw County for older adults and underserved po uh, populations. So, of course, we know, um, and that's why I'm here, is that there are gaps in transportation access here in Washtenaw County. And the mission of this program is to help fill those gaps and provide options for anyone who needs to get from point A to point B. Um, so as you can see, I work for Phoenix Mobility Rising, which powers the Ride at 50 Plus program. And we have been operating this program for about three years across the country. So we started this program in Columbia, South Carolina, expanded it to Dallas, Texas, and then started about 19 to 20 months ago in Washtenaw County. Um, and part of that reason is because Toyota, which is a large sponsor for this program, has a presence here in the county. For some details about the program, so the Ride at 50 Plus program is a mobility as a service program and a tool that can be utilized to fill transportation gaps in Washtenaw County. So I'll go through the screen fairly quickly, but I'll start at the top left corner and go down that column. So the Ride at 50 Plus program offers multimodal ride sourcing from several local transportation options, which I'll show in just a moment. Um, this service is targeted for individuals age 50 plus, as well as underserved populations, but this program is open to anyone in Washtenaw County who would like to use this program. This um, service, it has multiple access points. So we like to say call, click, or tap. Um, so we, um, you can call our call center, you can go online to book a ride, and you also can download the Phoenix app and uh, just have it right on your phone. We also work with local organizations in addition to individuals to help support them with their rides. So um, there is a slide that I'll show in just a moment um, of the types of organizations that join us. Um, we also have a lot of training options. So this service is something you can start today if you wanted to, but we have virtual trainings, we have online trainings, um, and I even go on site to organizations or communities to share more about the program. And then we work not only to provide the service, but to fill gaps in the community. Um, and we do so by um, hosting a mobility leadership circle. So that is about once a quarter and it's for all organizations or folks 
who um, work with individuals who are affected by transportation. They may be affected by transportation themselves or are also in the transportation um, industry. So I know that we have some folks from AAATA join us and it's very wonderful to have them and to be able to talk about um, you know, the gaps in our communities. So as I mentioned, uh, we do have several transportation options on our program. So I'll start um, at the top and go clockwise. Um, we have ride share services like Lyft and Uber, which you can book online or on the app. Um, we have specialty transportation services that um, have wheelchair assist, wheelchair lifts, um, and other um, mobility needs. We have our traditional taxi cab services. We have volunteer drivers through Phoenix Mobility Rising. Um, it is our most affordable option. And then we also, um, you can see public transportation options. So we do work with the WAVE and People's Express. And for AAATA, you can see um, if there's a bus route close by, you'll be able to see it in the feed. So of course, as I mentioned, this is a focus on um, adults ages 50 plus and underserved individuals, but it is open to anyone. AARP membership is not required. And of course, I can train everyone all day long. So if you wanna come back multiple times just to get a refresher, that is available to you. Our service area is Washtenaw County and the rides can go outside of Washtenaw County as long as they begin or end within the county lines. So if someone needs to go to Dearborn or needs to go up to Brighton, it is totally accessible um, depending on where our providers go. As I mentioned before, we have three access points for individuals. So we have our call center, online booking, as well as a smartphone app. And then organizations can also book online or use our call center. And then these are some of the types of organizations that we have. We have many um, organizations um, using our service. We like to call them B2B organizations. So we have community centers, we have health clinics, senior residences, um, faith-based organizations, sh shelters, and social service agencies, all using our program, but we also have a lot of individuals who book their own rides. And then I, I know I rushed through this because I, we have limited time and I wanna respect everyone's time, but um, it is pretty straightforward. I'm happy to share kind of a, a screen of what it looks like um, online, but I'm also willing to take any questions. Okay, I see that Bonnie has her hand up. Yes, hi. Um, can you share a little bit about the cost of your of your various services about what they cost? Absolutely. So our providers put in their own rates. And so you only see one price on your screen, but in on the back end, they are putting in a booking fee and a per mileage rate. Um, we do ask our providers to be as competitive as possible. Um, so it does vary. I will say our volunteer service is the most affordable. It's about half the price of what a Lyft or Uber would be. Um, and that is based on the federal mileage rate currently. Okay, that's that's kind of, I don't quite understand. So let's just no, say, yeah, no. I, live, I, live, I live in Pittsfield <laughs> Township, south of Ellsworth Road, where I can't catch a bus, okay? Yeah. And it's the weekend, so I can't use the, I can't use the bus service but I need to go to my doctor's, which is over on Jackson Road. So what would my options be and what kind of cost, you know, could just give me kind of a ballpark, I guess, that I would be looking at. Sure, so um, we, most of our providers, if not all of them do go into Pittsfield Township. So I will start with that. The cost is really, it is hard to gauge. It really does depend on where you're going um, because the distance is a factor. I can share my screen to kind of give you um, a, a kind of a, um, a, an example of what it looks like. Can you see my new screen, the new tab? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay, uh -huh. so you can see that I put in some information. So I put in a York, Ann Ar uh, York Ann Arbor to Cherry Republic. So it's really not a long distance, it's about two miles, but you can see kind of the options here and the cost for that. Um, as you can note, the volunteer ride is very inexpensive um, compared to Lyft um, and our other options, but these are pretty, um, pretty 
average, I would say about an average one way is 15 to $20. Thank you. Of course. Okay, I have Elizabeth, then Stephen, then Bennett. <clears throat> um, I'd like to know about uh, numbers, how many folks have been using the app and how many community groups have partnered with you? Sure. I do not have um, an accurate number for the app and I do apologize that I don't have that ready to go, but we do have about 13 organizations and we're always um, asking more to join us. And those are organizations that book on behalf of their passengers. We also have a large network of partners who share, uh, empower their own clients um, to book their own rides. So this is, um, while we only have those 13 organizations that book rides, it is significant. They have a large population. Um, and then we also have a lot of resource sharing. Could you maybe, I, I know it's asking you uh, off the cuff, but can you give a ballpark? Like, are we talking about 50 people use it a month? 200 people use it a month? So um, I, I don't wanna give a ballpark. I mean, I can say that right now it is, it's um, a little higher because we do have a promo right now, but I would say we probably have um, we could have about in the last month, I would, you know, I would say that it's between 50 and a hundred rides. Um, I would have to double check. Thank you. That's really helpful. I know I put you on the spot. No, it's okay. <laughs> I don't want to give you the wrong answer though. That's, that's why I'm hesitant. Okay. Steven. <clears throat> yeah. Um, <clears throat> two, I think relatively brief questions. One question is in regards to the Lyft and Uber um, approach. Is there, did you mention if there was a discount on that? Like is, if somebody is using it through your service, do they get anything different than they would if they went directly through Uber or Lyft? They would not. It's about, it's the same cost structure. Okay. And then the other question, you know, one of the things that this commission has been working on is to try to communicate out to the public so they're made aware of the fact there even is a commission on aging and we can engage older adults in the process. Um, ARP has generally been a master of doing so. Um, so I was just wondering how you're letting people know about your program and any um, you know, suggestions you might have or even engaging ARP in efforts on things like opera or just this or the millage or anything like that? Absolutely. Um, so this is through the AARP driver safety program, which I know there are a lot. <laughs> AARP is quite a big organization. So it is a small part of the agency, but um, I really am boots on the ground in Washtenaw County. I, um, although I do represent AARP, um, I do work for Phoenix and I'm the only person in Washtenaw County. And so part of my role is to connect with community partners, organizations, et cetera. But we do have a relationship with our state office, which is aware of our activities. Um, and we are continuing to work on that partnership and make it grow. And so I would love to talk offline about how to share more and even um, see if there are opportunities to share more about what you are doing in Washtenaw County. Thank you. Bennett? Okay, well, um, I represent, uh, I guess, seniors here. Um, I'm not the only one, but I do live with them. Um, okay, the, the question is they have to access or someone on their behalf access the web page to basically uh, determine a ballpark figure. Uh, and number two, um, to, if you will, uh, register in advance. Is that not correct? So um, if you do want to use the web platform, you are more than welcome to create an account and go through the steps. But you also can use our call center who will create an account for you and take you through that whole process and um, you know share what the who the provider is, how much it will cost, the timing, and all of that information. 
So if you're not as tech savvy, we like to say, if you have bought something online, you can definitely use our online platforms. But if you are hesitant, our call center is available um, to help you through the whole process. Okay. Um, okay, you did say, if I heard you correctly, I mean, there was a lot of information yes. that the <laughs> average cost one way was somewhere between 15 or $20. Now, is that for someone who um, is wheelchair bound or is that uh, for anyone who, um, can you answer what that average one way figure is for? So that's probably a general ride and that I would say is probably um, across town. So if you're trying to get from the edge of Ann Arbor to, into Ipsy or vice versa, um, as you at, if you do need wheelchair assist or you need a specialty provider, of course that rate goes up um, because that is their, you know, they are dedicated to providing that professional service. So that goes along with it. Um, and I will note that we as at Phoenix, as well as AARP, have recognized that this program in every community that we serve, um, the folks that need it the most are the ones who can't afford a ride. And so we are working on solutions to be able to support individuals who can't, um, you know, afford that $20 ride. Uh, okay, so well, okay. Now, I guess I see myself as being the conduit, if you will, for information for the whatever 120 folks um, who may um, want to go to church on, well, whatever on Sunday or visit a family member. So this would, for a average general ride, that would be between 30 or $40 for the entire trip, correct? Most likely, yes. Okay, the other, can you give me, since there are many people here who um, are wheelchair bound or need a, um, well, let's say wheelchair bound, how much would it cost? generally? Sure. So I, it does depend on the service. So we do have providers who um, their rates fluctuate. I don't, I could go in and give you a number I, for the sake of time. I don't want to like go on my screen just because um, it does, it really, the system takes what people's rates are and kind of like does it on the techie end and then puts it in front of you. So it really does vary. And I don't want to give you an answer that may be incorrect for your situation. What, when it, well, first of all, thank you very much, Rebecca, for speaking uh, to us. What would um, many of the people uh, use walkers? Mm -hmm. So uh, that at least would be kind of a diminution of you know, that a wheelchair would entail. So can you give me an idea whether that this would be a considered a general ride or a specialty ride? It'd be considered a general ride um, and you would be able to denote that. All of our providers are um, able to assist and put the, you know, we have, they're supposed to have space to put that walker somewhere. Um, whether um, it's in, you know, in another part of the vehicle and also assist, especially with our volunteers as well as um, Lyft, um, they are required to provide those special accommodations. So it Thank would be you. considered, yes. Thank you very much. Of course. Okay, and Elizabeth? So it seems like um, the, if I'm understanding the program correctly, where this really provides so much help is it's a one-stop shop, if you will. Um, say, I can't drive someplace. I have to figure out how to get there. Instead of calling AATA and uh, a cab company and something like that, I could either go online or call you folks and you could give me the menu of options. So it really it addresses some of the issues of given where I live, how can I identify what's available? 
Um, it does seem, as you pointed out, that affordability is a real issue, and we hear that a lot. Um, and it, as you said, the volunteer option is really the one thing that addresses affordability. Could you tell us a little bit more about the volunteer option, um, how you recruit volunteers, how available is that? Just a little more about that, because that's what really intrigues me because we hear on all the different domains uh, for older adults and transportation definitely being one of them, that how you, if you had plenty of money, it wouldn't be as big a problem. Absolutely. Um, so our volunteer program is small but mighty in Washtenaw County. Um, we were supposed to have a partnership with a company that kind of, um, they put it on pause, which have, would have brought us more volunteers and we're still working to reignite that relationship at the end of summer when they work out their staffing. Um, and so it is a, a few folks, including myself, I do give volunteer rides. Um, we do go through in a training. We make sure that all of our volunteers have their um, insurance up to date. We do background checks. We make sure that everything is good to go. And they also do receive some training and can go through a, like a kind of like a, a practice ride with um, myself. And so, like I said, it is small, but I am working on expanding that. Um, I have contacts with um, the RSVP program through, I believe the Catholic Social Services has the RSVP coordinator. I've reached out to Volunteer Washtenaw. This is a great opportunity for students who need volunteer hours, um, like college students. Um, really, I have been, I've been hustling and still trying to get out into the community and share more um, for a long time. And my predecessor really we really didn't have the opportunity to meet people in person just because of our limitations with the world. Um, but now we do have that opportunity to share more. And I only hope to bring on more volunteers because we see that impact in our other communities as well. I hope that answers your question. Okay, um, Bonnie, you have your hand up? Yeah, I'm gonna kind of piggyback on what Elizabeth just asked. I know you, um, what was my question is, you know, I, I'm in the, I also work trying to um, hire in folks right now. And I know the challenges of just trying to hire folks, let alone trying to get people to volunteer. So I know you say you're small, but mighty, but can you give us an idea of approximately how many rides a week or a month you guys do through the volunteer program? Sure. Um, I would say that we, Last month, we probably did between 10 to 15 rides. So there, I mean, I'll be frank, um, there's three of us that are very active right now. Um, and I do take a rides, not only because I want to, but because my organization, Phoenix, encourages our community development managers to take those rides. So um, we are there and, uh, you know, I do want to expand it because my other communities have about 16 to 20 volunteers. So I'm working on it. <laughs> Thank you. I know it's a challenge. Yes. <laughs> okay. I think um, at this point, we've been holding the transportation people hostage for quite some time. <laughs> um, so the question is, do we have any final um, things that might apply to either uh, organization or are we pretty set at this point? Does anybody have any final thoughts? We also have more things on our agenda also, so. Okay, seeing none, I would like to thank both organizations for their uh, participation. And if we have any follow-up questions, you'll be hearing from us. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having us. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye, thank Bye. you. Okay, <clears throat> in terms of report from the chair, I don't believe I have anything, um, unless any of the officers can remember anything that I was supposed to say that I didn't. Um, so we'll save time on the agenda there. The next item on the agenda is new business. Um, the secretary position, which has been held by Bonnie so capably, um, it, her appointment to secretary expires at the end of June. 
So we need to elect a new secretary for the remainder of the term of this commission, which is from July 1st until December 31st. Um, as you know, all of us are subject to um, uh, applying to continue on the Commission on Aging starting in January of 2023 um, and for two year terms, but it's uncertain how many of us will be there. So at this point, we need to recognize that. And so therefore the term that we're electing for is simply for July 1st to December 31st. Elizabeth, you have your hand up. Bonnie, are you willing to continue for? Well, I thought you were volunteering, Elizabeth. I thought you were volunteering. Ah, uh, how could I ever do as good a job as you? And I mean that sincerely. You you do such a wonderful job. Let's pile it on I will, that she consents. <laughs> I I will happily stay as as long as you all indulge me on Fridays when we meet through the summertime that I'm I'm sitting here in my little lake house looking out my window at my lake. So on the weekends this is where I will be. I'm home during the weekdays, but yes, I will stay. Unless of course someone is. The burning desire to be secretary, I will step down and hand over my ink pen and pad. No, <laughs> I think the floor is open for nominations. I nominate Bonnie Weber. I second. Margie. Got that, Katie? <clears throat> Are there any other nominations? I don't see anyone hustling forward to volunteer either. So I think maybe, Bonnie, you've set the bar a little too high for the rest yeah. of us. <laughs> so, uh, Katie, would you call the roll? Yes. Marta Larson. Yes. Marie Gress. Yes. Bonnie Weber. Yes. Elizabeth Thompson? Yes. Stephen Stein? Yes. Bennett Stark? Yes. Margaret Reynolds? Yes. Jason Machieski? Yes. The motion passes. Okay, thank you. Congratulations uh, or condolences, Bonnie, depending on how you wish <laughs> it. Um, <clears throat> the other thing under new business is a sub potential new subcommittee called Fund Mapping. Um, so I think at this time, it might be appropriate to have a discussion about whether we should have another subcommittee. We have four operating at this time, and we're already having trouble recruiting people for the fourth subcommittee. So Jason, did you have something or were you just not, huh? No, I did not, no. Okay. Um, so who wants to talk about the potential new subcommittee? Raise your hand, and Elizabeth. Um, it does seem to me that the issue has come up frequently about um, the resources that the county devotes uh, to the needs of older adults in a variety of areas. And certainly one of the challenges is unlike some other counties that have a very clearly identified office that might do some tracking of that, my understanding is, and Peter will correct me if I'm wrong, there really isn't a tracking in this county about looking at the specific programs and how they address the needs and put, pulling it all together. And I do think we keep asking the question, um, do we have the resources? Do we have enough resources? Should more resources be allocated? Um, so this kind of means that I would be volunteering to work on that. <laughs> If, because I do think it's really important, but I, I do think we keep coming up against the, the question, how much are we spending now to be able to answer, to look at the unmet need 
and make more specific recommendations to the the board uh, of commissioners like we've done some general ones but i think all our conversations around the millage issue potential millage issue really bump against this lack of knowledge about what we're actually um what washington county is actually doing right now Mm -hmm. Good point. Um, okay, I have Bonnie and then Stephen. Yeah, I. This is like a double-edged sword for us because it's information <laughs> that we need, but we don't have. We don't have as the Commission on Aging any type of resources or funding ourselves to even go out and have someone do a study for us or spend the time gathering the information that we need. So my concern about a subcommittee is, is what would their charge be for us to actually try to gather that information is going to do our own gathering, I think is going to be impossible to do. But maybe we might take an approach like what we've been doing on some of the other topics that maybe the subcommittee would do reach out maybe to other organizations that may have already done some funding studies, may have some information that they've already compiled for us. We might be able to have some presenters come in and talk to us about what information they have gathered and what they can share from us. Just kind of get a, see if there's a, a basis or a foundation. I know that when the county talks about actually having an office that kind of focuses on senior, older adult, community spending, you know, with a focus on that, I'm sure that the county then would start also compiling state, local, federal, you know, funding that's coming into Washtenaw County to help, you know, in private organizations and foundations to see where the inflow, you know, the, the money is coming in. But that's the challenge that I see is, is how, who do we work with? to try to funnel those different funds in? Is there somebody that's doing all of this? Or if there's somebody that's just focused on foundations or fund, focused on federal funds coming in or local and state funds coming in? You know, we, you know, we've been dealing with ARPA. You know, that was a specialty bucket of funds that were coming into our county, you know, once in, hopefully a once in a lifetime, we will never have to go through another pandemic again. Um, but that to me, this is just a huge, huge project. And Elizabeth, I can I give you kudos, girl, for stepping in wow. and saying you want to start because you got to start somewhere. But I think we got to have some really, if we're going to do this, some very um, specific expectations because I don't want the board of commissioners thinking we're going to go out and compile all this information at the end of the year and then give them this magnificent report on where all the funding and, and stuff is coming into the county because I think that's going to be an impossible challenge for us to do. So I think maybe we need to start trying to figure out who's gathering the information and, and work with them to get it and then maybe it'll be like a multi-step process that we do. But I think the first go around that we have to do is it's got to, you know, the expectations, I think, can't be that we're going to have some big report at the end of this year or even the end of next year outlining everything. Because I think that without any funding and without any staffing, it's going to be really hard for us to do. It's just my thoughts on the challenge. Okay, for organizational purposes, I have Stephen, Dina, Elizabeth, and then Margaret. I also recognize that we have 12 minutes left on our agenda time, our meeting time. So we need to have speed discussion. I don't think we necessarily have to make a decision today, but maybe just raise all the issues, think about it, and maybe at the next meeting, make a decision. That's one proposal that I would have. Um, I agree on that. So Stephen, would you? Yeah. Um, so first of all, Elizabeth, if you don't want to hang out there alone, I think you could merge this with the millage because I think in some ways it's a subgroup because I think what that was really something that, um, you know, you had said earlier that, hey, we're going after a millage, but we should understand what's available now, et cetera. I, the other issue I thought you brought up, and this is, this is the one thing for maybe for Peter and Jason, is just the general topic of as things happen in Washington County, 
is there like a, a group that somehow a voice that says, all right, you're gonna do this thing on transportation, on food, or blah, blah, blah. How is it gonna affect older adults? Or how is it gonna affect home old, home based older adults? Or how is it gonna include, affect people in nursing, whatever it is. And I thought maybe Peter or Jason, if you have, a, I mean, in a really succinct way could share as people are thinking strategically over the next few years or even um, in a short term, how is that how is that voice getting heard so it's thought about in any, in any issue right okay i can take i can take a shot at that real quick martha if you want who is that speaking it's jason oh okay um so uh, thanks for the question uh I, I i think that particular perspective gets it the reason why the county commission created the commission on aging was to have the commission on aging eventually become a body that can give the aging perspective on, on, on issues that arise, uh, being that this is a, still a relatively new body and you kind of dove into um, you know, the work that you have. Um, and it's gonna take time to get there. It's also gonna take the county time to learn and understand that the Commission on Aging is a resource that can provide perspectives. Uh, I, I've, I've continually looked at what is becoming the continually delayed strategic planning process in the county and uh, involving this particular body in that strategic planning process to provide that exact perspective. Um, so I, I will say that it's my desire to have the Commission on Aging provide some of that perspective. We just haven't gotten there yet. And that's, that's no fault of anybody in this meeting. Uh, I think it's, it's again, a factor of the newness and a factor of of the county's slow uptake on strategic planning. Secondly, I would also say that it isn't the complete burden of the Commission on Aging to provide that perspective. Um, there are other, other entities that may come at it from a healthcare perspective or a community-based services perspective, vendors of the county, um, and the area agency on aging that can all bring these perspectives in as well. But um, I, for me, it's really, it's a, it's a change in how how government thinks about decisions that it makes. Uh, and for me, the first step was creating the Commission on Aging. And in the years ahead, it will be engaging the Commission on Aging in these kinds of discussions and in, 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 in thinking about what the impact of older, on an older adults would be of, of certain policy decisions. So that's kind of how I looked at it. Okay, uh, Dina, then Elizabeth, uh, do you still have your hand up? And then Margaret, uh, and then Bennett. And then we have to move. We have to move quickly, though. I just have two um, quick points, and maybe the second one is a question for Jason. So um, I'm familiar with you know some of the funding in this space, and I would just you know put a, a caution out there. It's really complex, and for your group to take that on, I think would be a challenge. Uh, I do think that you know it's one of the the reasons that some other commissions have county staff that are supporting the work of the commission. So that, that is something that's lacking you know, in our um, group. So that is you know, something I think maybe just to uh, raise up again about whether or not there you know, can be county staff that can support the, um, the commission on aging. But secondly, a uh, question for Jason. I wonder as part of the ARPA package, could there be some funding put together to for like a consultant that could do this mapping specifically to help support the distribution of of that funding that the uh, that's going to be dedicated to senior services? I I would want to consult with the county administrator on that one before I give an answer. Um, uh, I, you know, I, I, I will say I'm in, I'm certainly in favor of um, having a position in county government that is dedicated to uh, senior services. And that would be working with the meals program through OCED and working with the commission on aging and in, in working with the senior center network. Um, I think that the way we get that position is through a senior millage. Um, 
But in, in terms of a consultant uh, to deal with some of these questions, um, I'd want to talk to the county administrator in terms of how we could get that done and how that could potentially be paid for. Okay, um, I have in, in the lineup, I have Elizabeth, Margaret, and Bennett, and we have six minutes. So we need to- I, I have my question answered. Oh, okay, thank you, Margaret. Three uh, quick points. I want to focus not on all the spending that is done and available within Washtenaw County. Uh, Bonnie, you're right, that's a very, heavy lift. I also don't think engaging a consultant with ARPA funds, given the time frames, uh, would work very well, in my opinion. But what I was talking about, and Steve, I tend to agree with you that it could be a subset of the potential millage committee, is beginning to look at only money that is appropriated by the board of commissioners, whether, and some of it is passed through and some of it is direct, that serves older adults. We may find when we ask that question that it's so overwhelming that our ask really will be, will the county consider having a permanent staff person who can answer these kinds of questions. But just to be clear, my proposal is only on county spending, not spending in the county. Okay, Benna. Okay, my question actually is to Elizabeth regarding um, the presentation on the 15th. What is the proper venue for uh, asking those questions? In other words, I'm much impressed with the aged advocacy of uh, Say Yes to Seniors, and I would like to learn about the apparent success. So, but maybe more detail, what specifically, what's the problem? If you venue? have my understanding, Bennett, is that if you have specific questions, please email them to me and I will make sure to work with the officers that it will get to Thank them. you. Thank you, Elizabeth. Okay, so I see that we have very little time remaining. We have a lot of good discussion, which hopefully has been captured by our recording and our secretary. Um, and I think what I would like to suggest is that we put this back on the agenda for the next meeting after we've had some time mm -hmm. to reflect on it. Um, and, um, I, I'm going to suggest that we move ahead. So the next thing on the agenda is the potential future topic of innovative solutions. I do not believe we have time to have a thoughtful discussion about that in any way. I did ask Elizabeth if she would tell us a little bit more about what she had in mind when she proposed that. And I think, again, within the interest of time, we need to put that on to the next meeting, mm -hmm. if that's acceptable to you, Elizabeth. Absolutely. Because um, I would like to assure that we have time for a thoughtful discussion. So I think maybe at the next meeting, we'll try to be a little bit more limited in the amount of time we spend with presentation and, and try to allocate a little bit more time for these other two discussions. Um, our next meeting is on July 1st, and we will hear a presentation by the Housing Bureau for Seniors. And the person who is coordinating that is Stephen Stein. So if you have any questions that you want asked in advance, please get them to Stephen right away so he can pass them along so they'll have appropriate amount of time to answer, to prepare an answer. And also the Say Yes to Seniors is the following presentation. And as Elizabeth just said, the best way to get to deal with questions for that is to email them to her. And now I've lost the deadline. Uh, due July 1st. So. That gives all of us some homework to do in the next week or so to uh, get these questions up to the various coordinators. And now we are at 1030. So um, I think at this time, it's time to entertain a motion for adjournment. I make a motion to adjourn. That was Bonnie and who supports? Yes. Uh, someone said something.
Who was that that supported? Raise your hand if you supported it. Oh, I will. Okay, Margaret supports. And we do not have to have a roll call, so we'll take a voice vote. All those in favor, vote yay. 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 Opposed, vote nay. Okay, we stand adjourned and thank you much, every much, very much everybody for your participation today. And we'll see you all next time. All right, thank you guys. Have a good weekend. Mm. Thanks Katie for uh, stepping in today. No problem. Have a good one, bye. Thanks, you too, bye.